a friend of mine who had started making beats asked me if I wanted to to rap over some of his beats. And as soon as I started doing that, I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm actually way better at this. So um, what was it that drew you in, into, into hip hop? How did you get started? Uh, I was, I mean, I, I guess I was always listening to it, you know, I mean, I was always listening to music. My mom was a DJ in the 70s and 80s and my dad had a huge music collection too. So I was surrounded by music all the time. And I, I loved uh, like all of that era sort of disco and funk stuff. But when hip hop, when I started listening to hip hop, like, you know, the earliest stuff I started listening to is cause an old a cousin of mine was, would play it for me, an older cousin of mine. And, and it was mine. Like when I fell in love with that, that was something that was mine that what didn't belong to my parents. You know? Uh, they didn't understand it. A lot of that was too short. A lot of that was NWA. It was like stuff my parents didn't want to listen to necessarily. Um, but, uh, um, and then when I was sort of an early teenager, you know, 13 or 14, I, I had, I, I had sort of fallen into writing to like the poetry slam scene. Uh, that was kind of another thing that like so many people do in the Bay. Detroit's like that too in Chicago a lot. Like there's just this youth poetry scene that is really thriving that you didn't know was weird until you left, you know? But like everybody I knew did poems. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just what you did. You write poems. Uh, and I, I was sort of doing that. And then a, a friend of mine who had started making beats asked me if I wanted to, to rap over some of his beats. And as soon as I started doing that, I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm actually way better at this. This, uh, the constraint, sort of rhythmic constraint is better. And it makes sense. I've been playing saxophone for a number of years. And I like, you know, I, I was always thinking musically. It just never really dawned on me to uh, approach writing that way until somebody asked me to do it. And then uh, sort of from that moment on, that's been kind of the, the main way that I write. Um, and even when I'm writing screenplays and stuff, there's like a, a definite like cadence and rhythm and constraint that I'm always, I am much better if I'm working within that. So uh, does musical talent run in your family? I don't know. I mean, no one else, I guess my, my grandfather played the guitar uh, on my dad's side. There, there are definitely musicians in my family. Neither of my parents play, but they were, like I said, moms was a DJ, so music was everywhere um and my dad is like one of the great storytellers of all time so it's, if we think about so it, it kind of fit, it kind of fits together yeah 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 yeah. so um what was it like um or what was the hip-hop scene like when you were growing up in Oakland man uh it was so it's always been such a diverse scene you know um we had like the the sort of more hardcore side of it or like the you know we had the two shorts we had like Richie Rich we had the loonies um all these sort of classic Oakland sounds and we also had hieroglyphics the first um the first rap concert I remember going to I was in seventh grade and it was right when the Souls of Mischief second album No Man's Land came out so this must have been 94 because 93 to infinity would have been the first one right and so uh so yeah, I remember that was the first concert, like me and my friend Bill, who I'm in clipping with, we went uh, like that. I went by myself with, with him to that one. Like, no, you know, I remember getting dropped off at Maritime Hall in San Francisco and going to see, going to see them. Uh, and so there was, there was that scene. And then I, I also, so all of those cats, right? Um, A plus and Festo and Dell the Funky Homo Sapien and all that stuff. And then we also had, like the that Soul Sides Collective that were all like students at UC Davis, you know, but uh, Black Alicious and um, Latirix, who like Lyrics Born of Latirix is s still one of my favorite people. Like, it, it's interesting because these are all guys who I, when I was first getting into them, I sort of idolized them and didn't, I didn't realize that they weren't world famous. You know, to me, there's like no difference because it's the interesting thing about the Bay is it's so supportive of itself, you know? So like a lot of our heroes, it turns out we're just local cats, but like I can, I used to see the gift of gab 
at Amoeba Records every Tuesday because we were both there every Tuesday, you know, and I'm maybe 14 or 13 or something. And he's probably in college at that point. And uh, I never spoke to him. I couldn't, I was like too starstruck to talk to him. But I saw him every day. I would stand behind him <laughs> while he was like looking through like the CDs. And then as soon as he left, I would come over and try to figure out what he was looking at. Uh, and uh, this is the rapper from Black Delicious. One of the one of the, like greatest sort of virtuosic rappers of all time. But nobody knows who that dude is. if <laughs> You're not from where I'm from, really, you know. But that to me, like I was too starstruck to speak to him. Many years later, I would end up opening for him at a show when I was in college, you know, and I told him that story. But uh so it, it was kind of like that we would see all these cats and and there was a huge like freestyle scene also this dude Saphir and like I said there was also this big poetry scene so all of that stuff kind of crossed over and, and fed into itself and people were always like pushing the envelope it was always it's a very Bay Area thing to just not want to sound like anybody else you know so there's this uh it, it's hard to I think it's one of the things maybe that hurts it as a market in terms of uh, being able to sell itself because it's hard to nail down what a Bay Area sounding thing is. Like Hyphy was kind of in my lifetime, the closest thing we got to that where like people sort of agreed, like at least we know that we're pretty much above 100 BPM and we're like, you know, and it's got a, and really emphasis on the upbeat claps. But like, uh, it, it, that was like as close as we got to coalescing a sound, you know, for the most part, everybody wants to sound like an individual. So who has the rights to Tupac? Is it the Bay or is it New York? Because I can't tell sometimes. I mean, I know where It's definitely not New York. You mean LA. Okay. Well, does New York think they have the right? New to York, Tupac? that's right. New York dropped him, sort of. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, there there's some people who still claim Pac in New York, but because he went to, I think he went to high school there. He um, went to, oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I don't know. We ignore did. that whole part of his life. Okay, all right. I don't know so I was like, well, who, who who does Pac belong to? And I I think it's the Bay. And it, you're right. In L. A. They claim him too. Um, uh, yeah, but I we definitely. Like, it's you it, he's yours <laughs> yeah of course well because like when was his first look when you the first time you heard of Tupac was when he was rapping as part of Digital Underground correct and that was during the during the Bay Area days <laughs> um <laughs> he used to uh live in those like Marin City projects right which was funny I did one of the, I did this play in the red and brown water um by the, one of my favorite playwrights Terrell Alvin McCraney who um we go on to write moonlight and uh but he in the bay area and like the theater spread out across three so he has these three plays called the brothers and sisters plays and the one that i ended up getting cast in performed out in marin and terrell wrote those plays to be performed in courtyards where he grew up he grew up in projects in miami so those plays were actually meant to be performed outside in the courtyards where he grew up, which is why they have all these interesting, what we now think of as like theater tricks where people walk in and, and say where they're coming from and what they're holding. Like Mama Moja enters like sweeping the floor, humming to herself or whatever. But that was because he didn't have wings or props, you know, so it was like <laughs> totally a practical thing. Um, but we went and performed that show in those projects where, where, where Pac spent some of his childhood. And that was like a really interesting, a really cool experience. They're still, they're still there. Uh, so yeah. for you as somebody who, um, you know, it, it, again, is a hip hop artist, for, what makes a great rapper in your opinion? Uh, to me, it is, it's, it's a, a lot of that. I, I always look for that thing I'm talk, I was talking about before, this like casual virtuosity. Um, and then I, I, I also, just uh, yeah I tend to enjoy like virtuosic rappers I, I think I like people who are who are trying things and experimenting with rhythm and tonality and um and I like I tend I tend to be into the people who if you, when you start looking into them they record a lot like they spend a lot of time on their recordings um because they obsess over the vocal performances of them or like I end up being less into the people not that there's anything I'm I appreciate the talent of a lot of folks who are just one take, like kind of, you know, like that's how it comes out. Um, but I, 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 it tends to strike less of a chord with me. Um, but I, 
yeah, I sort of, I, I, I just appreciate the craft of it. I appreciate unconventional choices. I like, I like hearing a thing and, and feeling like, oh, I would have never chosen that word ever. I, don't, I, I can't even imagine how you got to that point, place and it totally works. And uh, so, yeah, it's a little, it's a bit of, a, of an academic experience for me sometimes, but I also, you know, I, but it should still feel like something um, you know, it's still, I don't know. There's this like, there's this, <clears throat> cause I like a lot of people who sound totally different from each other, but I think it, it all, I get this feeling from all the stuff I'm really into that feels like, I don't know what it is. I can feel it in my chest. It's like, uh, I get excited by the construction of it. <laughs>